sequence this. I want to show you real quickly um, where we want to go. Actually, what I'd like is a, a sharp, sharp end of the cotyl elevator, please. So let's, let's kind of focus upon where we'll find the sphenopalatine artery. And there are a couple of principles. Now, normally you'd have your maxillary sinus intact, the medial wall of the maxillary sinus. We've taken down that posteriorly. But I do want to demonstrate one of the things you're going to do is make an incision that will be right at the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus on the harder bone, not within the posterior fontanelle. Otherwise, you'll create your dual osteal configuration. I guess you can deal with that now. But, um, but if we go back onto this, this more posterior bone, bone, we're really looking at kind of the ascending process of the uh, palatine bone. There, as you start to elevate this mucosa, and once again, I probably, let me just point out, here's your middle turban, here's your middle turban at posterior attachment. That's where you're going to be going. So we're anterior to that, we're within the middle meatus, but right down at the inferior aspect of the middle meatus, you can obviously see the coina just back behind us. So what we really want to start doing is elevating, and what we're going to encounter is, do you appreciate that little bone right here? That's the ethmoid crista, the crista ethmoid allison. and that's your landmark. That's what you're looking for. And sometimes it's larger, but it's, that's the whole thing right here, and sometimes it's smaller. But I have a kerosene rongeur. <laughs> So you can see right here we have posterior fontanelle. We really don't want to make our incision here. I, and once again, I usually will use a crescent blade for this incision. But you want to make a kind of curvilinear incision. You want to make sure that it's large enough that your incision does not hinder your, um, your ability to elevate. OK. We'll start to elevate. and. We run into the ethmoid crista right here. You can see that bone again. We want to make sure that we get around that. Yeah, you messed me up now. Okay, you see that little pink area right here? So could I have the... Um, Harrison Rongeur again. So here's our ethmoid crisp. It's a little bit fractured. We're going to want to remove this. So we get. I want to go back to that same side we've been doing. And we start to see our sphenopalatine foramen right here. Can you appreciate that? So we're below, and now we need to get above this. Could I have the uh, kerosene? There's our artery right there. You thought you had me, eh? You didn't. Yeah, I know. I'm going to. <laughs> okay, so. Could I have just a ball tip? Let me see the cotyl elevator. So what, one of the things we want to make sure we do, and this is the kind of the tedious portion of the um, of the dissection, I guess if there is a tedious portion of this dissection, is you want to actually have good access above and below the artery. You can see that's a that's a reasonable artery. There also is, there, there's a posterior. This will branch, and frequently there will be at least two branches. There's a posterior branch as well. But as you start elevating your mucoperiosteum you can actually start to expose that in relief. Now, do we have a clip? Yeah. By the way, you really need to get the endoscopic clip applier for this to be effective. The, you, the ones that you would use for, say, a free flap. So there's a, an example. So